Man, I totally screwed this video up. One of my favorite things to do is what I do with my family to look over the videos that we make of just the old times we had because at the time when perhaps I shot it, you know, I just, whatever was happening was happening and it was good and it was fun and it was beautiful. But then looking back on it and being so grateful that I have those moments to be able to see my son, be able to see my sons grow up, my wife and how she was, or maybe we were sewing our heads that day. Anyway, I had a good day today. We went to the Thinkery, it's this place in Austin that uh, is for kids and it's super cool. It's all like science-based and man, I wish, I wish I could play there, but anyway, whatever. But man, it was, it was amazing. And I just wanted to put this together about married life because being a married man is tough. It's hard. It's hard. And I want to make a series of videos on that. Like when is a divorce, you know, on the table? What should we do if we're going through a divorce? You know, what happens with life after kids? But in today's episode, it's about how to save your marriage. And, how to get through the hardships because from what I know from having a men's group with married men with men who've gone through divorces with men who've seen rough times in their lives is the greatest thing about masculinity is how much pressure we're given and how we survive from it that is how you get something good check out this podcast there's going to be more of them that have to do with the subject and uh we'll talk to you guys soon Hey guys, my name is Steve Maeda and I'm a men's coach in Austin, Texas. I'm a BJJ practitioner, a Wim Hof enthusiast. I have an amazing family, four awesome boys and a beautiful wife. And what this podcast is about is about being the better man. What we talk about is tried and true because we've been doing it. With groups of men just like you for over 12 years. Listen up and I hope you enjoy. How do I save my marriage? So this is a question that we have written in from the Austin Men's Development Board. Come join us over there. It's good stuff. But more importantly, we're on our Wednesday night call, our TSL Online, our Men's Development Excellence call. Two groups merging into one. You should definitely come and check it out because what we do and what we've done since 2006 is pretty amazing, man pretty freaking amazing we have a group of guys that look for the solution that lives the solution that live the answer if you want to meet guys that are like yourselves who might have the problems that you have or maybe they're going through problems that you've had but have achieved a level of excellence and unify upon that that's where we're at but if you want to join the free group that's awesome as development so we we have this question about saving our marriage and It's kind of tough because within our group, we've been talking about this a lot. We've been talking about our relationships, our marriage, our married lives. Some of the guys are single. In fact, like about two thirds of the group is single, but over a third has been married or is currently married and so on. And it's interesting because we, if we don't know you, how do we save your marriage? And there's all this chatter online about how to be a great man, how to save your marriage, you know, hold the alpha frame or all this sort of stuff. And so much of that is BS and there there could be truth in it. You know, most of this stuff, it's like generally good advice to communicate in all these different ways. But if we don't know where you're starting at, what can we do? But in talking about this, because we know each other, you know, we, we bleed with each other. We fly out from all around the country and meet each other and have retreats and all this sort of stuff. We know each other. We've worked, there's guys on here who've been a part of our courses since 2012, 2009 that are on the call right now. And see, the one thing that it comes down to when it comes down to your marriage is you. And what kept coming up for us is the Identity Workbook. And I'll put a link in here. It's from 2009 to 2015, the one that we used then. If you're put off by spelling or poor use of grammar or whatever ramblings that I did then, Well, sorry, it may not be for you, but if you want a tool that literally hundreds of guys who went through those courses and probably it's more like thousands would say is the number one tool from that course, it's the Identity Workbook. In fact, they'd say the Identity Workbook and the community, the calls and so on, which made it so unique. But the thing about the identity workbook that is so powerful is that it only focuses on you. It only looks at you. And part of the reason for that, and one of the things that got written in is, you know, this guy saying, you know, my wife is gaslighting me and all this stuff. And she says this about me and that about me. And man, this is, this is what happens in a marriage. This is what happens 
with women and men when they come together. You don't need to worry about her problem as a woman and her evolutionary background of it. And this is why women do things. Fuck all that. You don't need to worry about society and the socioeconomic problems that force her and you to act certain ways that make you a victim in something. Look, if you're a victim, you're still a victim. I don't care if it's happening to you. If you enter into the game of life and something happens to you, it's still your fault. But the thing that you need to do is you need to work on yourself. You need to analyze yourself. You as a man, you as a man, you as a human being are built and made to take anything life gives at you and be able to live through it. A marriage, a unification between two people, that man is a pretty amazing thing. And I don't want to get into the, you know, monogamy, non-monogamy sort of thing. Look, it, guys, it, at different points in your life, you're going to want to give yourself to a woman. This is something that we were actually talking about a couple hours ago. We, it's almost midnight here in Austin, Texas. This group is talking. We have how many guys here talking? We got nine people on the call interacting. And we started this call at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. About 30 guys have probably rotated through it. But one of the things that we were talking about in terms of the, the guys who are divorced, like, man, I never want to get married again. You know, be pointless and so on. And some do and you know, whatever. But a lot of the guys will say that, man, I never want to get married again. And they say, like, man, it's so pointless. It's just a cultural lie. And I was like, man, that's, that's, that's bullshit in itself, too, because it's not a cultural lie. It's something that we all feel at times when we're with a woman. It's a part of seduction. It's a part of sex. It's a part of how we feel and connect with, with women. We will want, man, we'll, we'll want to dedicate our lives to them. For that moment, in that moment, you know, we make the mistake, you might say. But we want to just give ourselves completely to that woman. That's a beautiful thing. And that's a great thing that, that we as men need to be aware of. This all being said... That when we're in that reciprocation and connection that we have with one another, when we're in that relationship, it's our job to be our best. It is our job. It is your job. If you want to save your marriage to be your best, if you are not being your best, then you cannot have this discussion. Your best isn't defined by what she says is wrong with you. Listen to that. If you are basing what your best is on what she says is wrong with you, then you have no ground to stand on. You are not built by somebody else. You are not lived by somebody else. You are not led by somebody else. And I don't mean that in the alpha way. You are ultimately led by you. And she is ultimately led by her and so on and everybody in this world. You need to build yourself up. And if you don't do that, if you do not do that, then you really have no right to have an opinion about everything because the world gets done to you. You do not do to the world. Again, this is not about power. This is not about you being better and so on. But if you do not take care of yourself, if you do not truly claim what pure responsibility and self-responsibility is all about, which is knowing yourself, looking at what affects you, looking at what hurts you, looking at your patterns, looking at all these different things, but existing in the world as you, then the world gets done to you. How can you not be a victim with that? Again, if you're a victim, I don't care if somebody lied to you. I don't care if you got, like, man, I, I've been victimized terribly in my life. But you know what? I shouldn't have been playing that game. I, and it's a fucked up thing to say because the one thing that comes to my mind has to do with kidnapping, abduction, and sexual assault. I should not have been in that game. I should not have been in that. I did not know enough about life. I did not know. happens happens so we need to learn from these things if life delivers you a tragedy if life victimizes you you must learn from it but in all of that how do we become our best well i mean one of the things that we do we talk about it we analyze it we sit as a group we we share what is wrong with ourselves when we're angry when we get hurt when our wife makes us mad when we get in a big tragic fight over and over again for the third time or whatever in the last month with our wife. We come to the group and we're pissed off and we're angry and we're allowed to vent. But ultimately, somebody in that group says, you know what? Hey, Steve or whoever it is. Look, how are you being your best? 
How are you being your best? In fact, I talked about this when it came down to uh, giving a talk about fatherhood. You know, when I when a point in my life, I couldn't see my kids for five years. I actually I didn't know it was five years at the time, but you know, I knew it was a while. And one of the guys in the group said, Steve, shut up. Just stop. Like, I get you're mad. I get that the courts are fucked up. I get that all these things are happening. But you, as a father, at least from his definition, he says, from my definition, is that I need to be the best for my sons. How can you be the best for your sons? Even if your sons aren't in front of you, even if they're not there right now, even if they won't be in front of you for a month, just so it turns out it was five years, how are you going to be the best? And what was so important about that, you know, I was still angry and all this other stuff, but I focused on being the best. I focused on getting my emotions in check. I focused on being solid. I focused on being a leader. And one of the things about being a leader, which is so important about this entire conversation that we are having, is that as a leader, you also realize that you're going to fail, that you may lead your family into a mistake, a tragedy, a loss. And your job is to wear that loss, learn from it, but get up and start again. Let's also put it this way too. Your wife is going to be a leader in ways. She's going to do that. She's going to do these things. It's not about being a power struggle. It's so much of what I hear. God, it's it, it's almost as if men are studying masculinity without ever living masculinity. And that's your fault. Believe me, I don't care what environment you're in, unless it's a prison. But if you're in the U.S., if you're in a Western country, you have the opportunity to be a man. <clears throat> you have the opportunity to be a husband. It's not societies. It's not you know, the culture and all these things, you know, it's not because there was a sitcom that didn't have a male hero on it. I watched those same things. So did many other people. It's that you didn't go out and find it. So we all have these excuses. Why do you need to live that? Why do you need to own that excuse? The number one thing that you can do right now to save your marriage is of course, yes, listen to your wife. You know, what are some of the, the textbook things? And again, this is a weird thing when I get a written in question because I don't know what your situation is. You could have mental illness, she could have mental illness. There could be all these different things that I don't know what's going on because those do have factors in it. Again, never any of those things. Never is that an excuse for not being your best self. But of course, you know, a woman wants security. She wants to be appreciated. She wants to be loved. She wants to be adored. All these things. A man, a man wants to be respected. A man wants to be believed in. Those are some tagline things. But what would be worse is that if your wife knew that you were doing those things just to please her. What would be even worse if, if she knew you were doing those things just to please her because you feared what she thought of you. Because then that would prove that whatever she did think of you that you feared was true. Guys, how you're going to solve the problems of your life and all the problems. You know, it's funny because they said, man, it's funny, Steve, because you made a, uh, a video about how to get your girlfriend back. Guess what? The same way you get your girlfriend back is the same way you keep your girlfriend, which is the same way you keep your wife, which is the same way you better your life. You focus on yourself. You devoutly look at who you are and build that. And if you do, God, man, you build the life around you, the ecosystem around you that is right for you. But if you're living in conflict, most of the time, you're living someone else's life. Step it up, guys. Gentlemen, if, if that is something that speaks to you, I really encourage you. I really encourage you. There's no reason ever to be alone. There's no reason to ever wonder what it's like to be around guys who are focused and driven and who are happy. I mean, that was one of the things. We were talking about some great coaches out here that I, that I really like. There's a lot of bad coaches in the men's development industry, but we were talking about David Tien. We were talking about Hans Komain. We were talking about Stephen Grush. Three very, 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 very different people. But we were talking about it 
And we were we were saying like, man, what's David's group about? Because David has, you know, a certain type of demographic of guys that he helps. And there's a specific result that you see with them. You know, they they tend to be very financially successful and so on. Not everybody in his group, but the people at the top, at the upper tiers of it. Hans is it's like these passionate, romantic lovers and travelers. Um, when you look at what happens in our group and they're all just great in so many different ways and and our group is active man our group is always talking we're huge on community i mean we're on a call that's you know going on its sixth hour actually almost at seventh hour at this point and it'll go on even more tonight and then we have a call on sunday that goes on for sometimes 15 hours or that's the average is 15 hours actually we have calls saturday you have meetups that we live stream locally in austin uh you know, on Thursdays, and there's just a lot of camaraderie, a group that is always communicating, always talking. But the level of sense of self that is within us, the level of camaraderie, the level of happiness that everybody has, no matter what walks they have in life, that exists. And guys, don't ever think that that doesn't exist. Hit me up, shoot me an email, you know, shoot me a message or whatever. But most importantly, if you really want to get a hold of me, Go to the Austin Men's Development Board on Facebook. If you're not on Facebook, I understand. It's, at some point, we'll get off there. But send me a message. Let's talk. Masculinity is here. It's happening. It's never been without you. Don't fool yourself and live the lie of what the culture, the media, the, the, the culture of hysteria is telling you where it is. Because it's a beautiful thing. Man, I, I I just love this. I love it. Guys, thank you so much for watching. And if you're having struggles with this, shoot me an email. You know, it's all down below in the show notes. Or if you're watching this on Facebook, come and visit us at our groups. But be a part of what we're doing because we, we are men living in excellence. There is so much going on. There's so much happening with Austin Men's Development. And it doesn't matter where you live in the world, be a part of it. Don't sell yourself short from that. There's the free group. If you want to step it up and really make some moves in your life, there's the paid group, Men's Development Excellence, and there's other tiers that go up beyond there, but that's a good starting point. Guys, living your best life. Living your best life is something you owe to yourself, so don't sell yourself short from that today. All right, thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for being a part of the family. We'll talk to you soon.